And I have been teaching for over 20 years. I um, am a public school teacher. I have taught ages 4K all the way to adult. Um, I have a lot of experience with visual arts. So I, I'm a fine art teacher, I'm a fine art coordinator, I'm an administrator. So I have all this background in the fine arts. And, you know, it kind of dawned on me. I do have some homeschool parents that have reached out and said, you know, we want to do art classes, but I have a box of stuff and I throw the stuff on the table and say, have at it because I don't know how to really, really teach, um, teach art. I can make stuff. We can do a cool little drawing or painting, but I really don't know uh, the important part of why my kids should really do art or what they really should be learning in the, in the area or subject area of art. So um, with that being said, um, talking to you a little bit about your um, homeschool think tank and what your families are looking for, um, I started to think a little bit about what projects are really, really fun. They teach a lot of different concepts all at one time. There might be a little bit of art history in there or a little bit of other core subject matter areas um, that can be added into it. So I started thinking about how I could how I could create some lessons that would be great for the homeschool community. And so I came up with this workshop that I thought, you know, this would be a great free workshop um, for our families to experiment with and to kind of play around with for the holiday of Halloween. Now, do they have to do Halloween theme? No, they don't have to do Halloween theme. They can uh, pick more autumn-y type um, subject matter, just pumpkins and trees and things like that. Um, but there are some families that may want to just go all out and hit the Halloween train running. I think that's awesome. Now, let me ask you this. Let's say somebody were to listen to this podcast a few months down the road. Could they take what you're doing and apply it to a different season? Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. And yep. In fact, it'd be even great because you can change the background colors. If you're looking for winter, you could do the blues, green or blues, purples, whites, um, that kind of thing. Right now, the, with the background for the work workshop we're doing is going to be a sunrise, sunset, Halloween-y kind of feel yeah. to it. So it's all warm colors. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about how you can change the, change it to a different or a different subject area or you know subject matter whatever you like but it's totally it's totally changeable you can you can change it up however you want and in fact I encourage um, I encourage people to to do that awesome awesome in some ways what you are doing online here almost makes me think of you know like the painting parties that moms go do and you have a glass of wine or whatever it almost and you pay like i don't know 30 bucks to go do it yes it makes me think a little bit along those lines so this is geared more toward the kids sort of in that same vein but you can do it out of the comfort of your own home do i understand that right right exactly and, and in fact i i really encourage parents to jump in and create with their kids because yeah uh, lots of times you know we think oh we're just gonna do this for the kids it's their class or their workshop or whatever and it's not it's not at all and in fact on my website a lot of my paintings that i or paint workshops that i have are geared for really the whole family like it's kind of it's kind of been geared more toward moms and women because those are the people that tend to take a lot more uh, creative workshops and do a little more self care when it comes to um, creativity. But imagine if you're sitting at your kitchen table or dining room table and you have your kids with you and you have your um, videos up and you're all painting at the same time and creating all at the same time. You're gonna notice. And this is so great. This is like my favorite part about everything is that even though you're all painting the same exact subject matter or the exact same type of painting, they will all be different. Yes. Every single time, every single time it'll be different, which is just, that's the best part of, of the lessons in, in a nutshell. Like everybody comes out, they learn the same concepts, but you create your own piece. And that's so, so important. 
I think so. I think so too. And you know, I'm going to tie a few things in here together. And I don't know if you know this. I actually, I took painting classes for years. So in college, I had to take um, a studio arts class for credit, right? So actually, the first studio arts I took was pottery. And I thought, well, I can't draw, so I probably can't paint. So I took pottery and I took all the pottery classes they offered. I love it. And then, after, actually, after I graduated from college and I was a teacher, so I had summers off, I decided to take a painting class and I'll share my motivation with you. My husband and I had bought a new home and he wanted nothing on the walls because um, <laughs> I can't say our moms have the best taste with what they put on the walls, but there are a lot of family photos with all the people they love. So that's a good thing. <laughs> But as far as the actual decoration of it, it's not great. Sorry, mom. Sorry, mom-in-law. <laughs> but then we went to my dad's house and my stepmom actually does have very good taste and her walls are nicely decorated. So after that, my husband said, well, I guess we could put some things on the wall, but we're only going to do paintings. Now we were young and newly married and didn't have much money. So I was like, hurry, I'm thinking like these $3,000 paintings on our walls. I'm like, we can't afford that. So my motivation to take painting was to decorate malls. I have since then taken all the painting classes you could take at the local college for credit. I've actually even had my own art show. And wow. I, awesome. it's been, it's probably been, oh my gosh, at least seven years since I picked up the paintbrush though. Um, and I really do enjoy painting. I still have my easel and all my paints and all my stuff. So I'm actually excited for your class. And I think I will do this with my kids because in the other thing we're currently doing in our home is sort of reorganizing one of our rooms from like a living area, like, you know, a basic living area with a couch. Cause we have two living areas, but we're putting like a big table in there so we can still eat ta dinner at our kitchen table. And then we have the dining room table or then this like craft table. That's the purpose of it. I want to be able to like sit around and even if I'm working on homeschool think tank, be in the same room with my kids while they're painting and doing crafts or schoolwork or whatever, or we can all be doing painting together. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do this, Brenda. I hadn't really actually thought of me doing it with my kids. And here's the other connection point. I'm taking a Dana Abraham's Calm the Chaos class, partly for myself, but partly because I just want to be able to share what it's all about with other homeschool families. And one of the things she talks about a lot is connection and connection with your kids. And this is actually a great idea to just connect with your kids, to just paint with them and just be together in a really pleasant way that's not stressful at all, you know, like, I think, I think it could go hand in hand with that. So. Well, and I, you know, I, I really stress to parents a lot. Um, I have a lot of parents that always come and ask me, you know, well, what are they ever going to use art for? Right. They're not going to, they're not going to be an artist. Why, why would they need, why would they need art? Well, if you think about it, any problem solving that we do on a daily basis needs some type of creativity. Now, I know we jump right away from to creativity. When we think of creativity, we think of art, painting, drawing, pottery, whatever. But in reality, the same skills that you are using while you are creating artwork is the same skills that you use when you are decorating a Christmas tree, making a beautiful dinner. Um, you know, what, what things do you do on a daily basis that you have to jump out of the box and make it kind of your own, right? Can I share something? And Absolutely. Answer Absolutely. <clears throat> Sorry. So every day now, that creativity and that, the art classes I've taken, I use them on Homeschool Think Tank, on this website. Right. And then when you go to, you know, I've learned so much about branding over the last couple of years. So you have your core colors. Well, you go to pull photos from somewhere, you're pulling those colors together. It is absolutely something you really use. But on the flip side of that, not only do you use the skills, but 
painting art, it's relaxing. It's so relaxing. And it's sort of like meditation in a way, I think. It is. Just get in this flow. Yep, it is. I call it the zone. When you get when you're in the zone, all of a sudden you forget about the time. You forget about eating. Sometimes you got to remind yourself to breathe. It's it's a, a point of where you are just so into what you are doing and in your zone that everything kind of melts away and you are just focused in on that one thing. And how many times during the day can you say that you actually do that? Because I know especially sorry dads, but especially moms, you know, we are constantly juggling 8 million things at one time. Your brain, my brain, I know it are in 8 million different places. You're thinking about what's coming next. What did you just get done? What's coming up next week? What do you have to do in a month? Your calendar is full. What, who's you, who's, who do you have to call? Whose email do you have to answer? What's on Facebook? You know, like, we just have a squirrel brain because we have so many things going on and multitasking so many things. When you are doing a piece of artwork, drawing, painting, sketching, whatever, um, your brain just kind of goes right to that spot. And you're so into that spot, really very, very, very seldomly do you actually start to think about all the other stuff, right? I mean, you're right. You just kind of get correct. zoned in there. So really it's, it's, it's very relaxing, very therapeutic. And it's just, it's just good exercise. It's just good exercise for how to think differently, how to solve problems in a way that, you know, you don't have exact, the exact answers. Yeah, you have steps on how to do things, but is there an exact way that you have to do it to get the right answer? No, because technically all answers are right. And there's no, there's no way to make a mistake. If you're painting and you make a mistake, you don't like it, you paint over it. Oh, and that's the truth. I still, um, I'm not much beyond the stick figure when it comes to drawing, but I've, I, I've painted some beautiful things and I like, I'm proud enough of them to hang them on my own walls. Let's put it that way. And they've been there for over a decade. Some of them. Well, and I laugh because people will say, well, I'm not good at painting. I'm not good at drawing. I'm not, well, I, you know what? If I went out on the basketball court and tried to, try to do free throws, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not good at it either. But if I went out to that basketball court and I did it every day or I did it a couple times a week and I kept doing it and kept doing it and kept doing it, I'm going to get better. So practice yes. makes better. You're never going to be perfect. I don't well, care who you are. I will never be perfect at what I do. But practice makes better. And so I always encourage kids and adults and everybody just to keep practicing because really there's no, there's no ribbon at the end of the line. You're not going to, yeah. you're not going to get to the end of line of creativity and say, I'm done. Okay. I'm oh, good. no. That's it. You just keep creating, you know, that's, yes. that's the way it is. So, yeah, I, I agree with you and I do genuinely believe being a creative person is so important. And I, I, I've, I've sort of evolved a lot in the last two years since I started homeschool think tank. And I think it even more so since I have be, began, <laughs> began, I'm saying that wrong. Anyway, the homeschool think tank, because because it has taken a tremendous amount of creativity to develop this from everything from knowing what I want out of a logo to thinking about even at today, today, before we were doing this call, I was thinking about, you know, I have this free part of the home, of homeschool think tank. There's, it's like a, a free group. Um, and then I have a paid portion of the homeschool think tank community. And I want to offer value to people who are just part of homeschool think tank. And then clearly people who are paying more. So you're being creative in that and setting up all these groups and workshops and different things for people to be able to interact with. And yeah, there's, there's a lot of creativity and there's a lot of art involved. <laughs> And thinking about your colors and because you want it to look pretty for people. You want it to be inviting. Right. So. Well, and, and, you know, stop and think about um, any, any employer, 
okay, our, you know, we want our kids to be happy and successful and employed, right? They, we don't want them living in our basement at 40. No. So if you have an employer and they're looking to solve a certain problem, they're looking for someone who can take that problem and figure out different solutions to solve that problem. They're not going to give us the that these are the steps that I want you to do to take to solve the problem. No, that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for someone who can take problem, figure out a bunch of different solutions, find the one that works, and then run with it, right? Yes. And that's really basically what art is. That's what art does for people. Here's something else I think about art. And I I think it helps develop confidence as well. And I can tell you a time when I was painting, when I lacked confidence and how I grew into that confidence. Because I can specifically remember I was doing like a master study. I think it was maybe a Van Gogh. I can't even remember now. Anyway, but it, it was a woman. And I had painted this woman and she was nude <laughs> anyway just the back of her but anyway but I had it just like the bottom up but whatever I'm like just keep listening just the bottom up <laughs> I hope there's not anyway but um I had actually put my own spin on it and I had painted her sort of a different color and like maybe there were purples uh, it was like more purple and it it was different than the original. And I looked at it and I can remember this to this day. I think it was beautiful, but I didn't have the confidence to leave it in my own style. And I changed it and put it back to the way it was meant to be. And I wish I wouldn't have. I still have it hanging in my bathroom, but it, um, but I have developed confidence since then, even though I haven't painted for years, if I were to do that painting today, I'd do it the way I wanted it. And I've taken, I've done many other, I finally quit doing master studies. I pretty much only do my own work. Not that I've painted for a while, but I got to where I just do my own work because I want to own it all the right. way. But I have found that I am very okay with things being the wrong color, right? It's not the right color, but you have to think outside of the box. So right. I, painting, art, all the things that you do, help people learn to be okay with sometimes having the sky purple instead of blue, you know? Right. Well, and who makes those rules? Yep. Who makes and those rules, right? And, mm -hmm. and what makes it wrong if we do it our own way? Who says it's wrong? You know, those are some of the things that you just have to kind of think about. And, you know, the hard part is, is that when kids get to about 12, 13, that's where the lack of confidence kicks in because if you give if you give a first grader if you give a six-year-old a seven-year-old a uh, thing of watercolors and some watercolor paper and you just give them the direction to paint a sky they're gonna they're gonna probably add green and orange and you know have all of these funky colors going on you give a 13 14 year old a paint watercolor paint and a paper, piece of watercolor paper and a brush and you tell them to paint the sky what are they probably going to paint it? Yeah, it's going to be blue. It's going to probably be blue, right? Because that's the right answer. And so it's so, so, so important that we start helping our kids realize that when you're looking at creativity, there is really no wrong answer and that you have to kind of dig your own style and be confident in your own style because there are going to be people that are going to tell you that's wrong. Well, and you know what? You can't please everybody. And that's part of life is becoming, first, when you're younger, becoming aware that you can't make everybody happy. And to, you have to please yourself ultimately. And I have to say, this is something, <laughs> here I am in my 40s, and I'm finally getting there. And part of that is homeschool think tank, because while I have been working on this, for two years now, I like I conceived the idea. It was about this time of year. It was October because I remember doing Halloween type stuff when I'm thinking of this. My daughter's birthday was coming up, and I while well, I've been working on it and knowing I had this message to share, 
it took me almost two years to get the confidence to start doing it. And I hear part it. of that, Brenda, part of that is you have to be able to stand behind what you say. And while I, I can actually even already listen to some podcasts and I, I didn't say it quite right. I misspoke a little bit, you know, and it, it's, it, it's not that like the message is totally different, but I could have phrased that a little bit better. But part of that is, you know what? Some people are going to hate me and I know it. And some people are going to love me. And I know that too. But what's the most important is that I love me and I love the message that I stand behind and the people that resonate with me and with what homeschool things think and Bob will join us. And, and you know, it, it, it's about there because unlike when you are having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody or even in a small group and you can sort of tailor your your speech and yourself and mold to that group when you stand alone and speak and you put it up you don't know what people are going to think right you don't know and you have to have the confidence and all these little things over the years including painting have helped me build my confidence. Right, <laughs> so, exactly, exactly. And it's the same with your artwork. You've yep. got to be able to say, I'm done and I am happy with this piece. Right, That's it. right. And there are some pieces you never finish. You just can't get them right. And right. you finally go, I'm done with that. I'm going to start fresh and do something new and be okay with that too, that you're yep. not going to finish them all. Yep, so, exactly. So Brenda, I want to talk to you a little bit more about this workshop that you're going to do. I've been doing is I have been creating workshops that have a full, um, a full supply list. They have, it's all written out step-by-step -step instructions, but then there's also a video to go with each of those step-by-step -step instructions and an example of what the project should look like or what examples of projects that are completed, what they look like. So there's a full, um, just a full from the beginning to the end of how to start it, how, what it looks like in the middle and what it looks like at the end and step-by-step -step instructions and videos. So for the, for the workshop that I'm um, working on for the, or have done for the um, homeschool think tank is it is a study of gradients. So light to dark, warm color mm -hmm. background. So it's a sunrise sunset background with a Halloween type silhouette, um, black, painting on top of that. Um, so it's, it's the kids that are taking the workshop or parents as well, um, who are taking the workshop, they will learn how to blend colors with acrylic paints. So we're using acrylic paint. They'll learn how to blend colors with warm colors for the background. We do a radial type design. So it's from the inside out to the edge. And then we learn a little bit about silhouettes and how um, if you if you look at a sunrise or sunset and the sky is bright in the back and everything in front of it is very dark or black, you really can't tell the details. That's what you will be uh, working on for the subject matter that is the silhouette. So, for example, some of the some of the examples that I have of the finished project is a um, very Halloweenish type tree with no leaves on it, right? They're reaching yeah, out. The branches. kids are gonna love it. Yep, they're reaching out branches with um, the ground with grass or higher grass, and then a couple of pumpkins. There's mm -hmm. an example of one with um, the background. This young lady did a whole kind of spin on it, which we just got them talking about. She wanted to do sunflowers that were kind of drooping, mm -hmm. so her silhouette where it was these beautiful sunflowers that were kind of drooping over um, when they get heavy and full of seeds and they, and they droop over. So yeah. that was her. She decided instead of doing the Halloween, she wanted to do more fall. And that was, mm -hmm. that was what she chose to do for her. So they're all different. Some of them have little bats in them. The examples have, a, uh -huh. have bats flying in the sky along with the trees and the pumpkins and all that good stuff. So it's basically um, learning color, color mm -hmm. blending, landscape so foreground middle ground and background yes as well as uh warm color and then how to how to paint the silhouettes in i think this sounds fun i think it sounds great and i want to ask you 
and because I have the art experience, would you please tell our parents why it's important that they probably want to buy acrylic paints and not oil-based paints? Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> because yes. with kids, this yes. is an important it's, distinction. Get the right kind. Yes, yes, yes. And in fact, I highly recommend, highly recommend um, going to uh, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Walmart even, getting the little bottled acrylics. Um, they're cheaper. They work great for what we're doing. They blend great. You do not want oil. Oil takes super long time to dry. It like takes, days. Day, weeks. Weeks. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's, it's, it, can you tell I'm not an oil fan. Um, I, I love oils fan. for myself, it's but very not simple. for the kids. Right. So acrylics, first off, acrylics are much easier for cleanup. They're a lot less um, toxic when it comes to odor and um, the, the chemicals that you need to clean them up. They are water-based, water, uh, soap and water cleanup. They're much easier to find and they are much cheaper, much, much cheaper. And in fact, I, if you have little bottles of like the apple barrel acrylics, that's exactly what I'm showing to use in my, in my workshop. If you already have those at home, you probably don't even need to go buy anything. You already have what you need. Um, if, if you have a heavier uh, mixed media type paper, that's what I've used. You probably have all the supplies you need right under your own roof um, that you probably won't even have to purchase them. But yes, make sure that you have acrylic paints. I highly suggest the cheaper bottled ones versus the, the tubed acrylics. Tubed acrylics are great if you've got them and you wanna use them, that's totally fine too. But uh, with, with more of our little folks and kind of the middle-aged folks of um, elementary and middle school, I would highly suggest the bottled acrylics. They're just, they're just much easier to use and much easier to clean up. Yes, yes. And I, I just thought I'd point that out. So about it, do you have anything else you want to add today? I don't think so. This is great. I just want to say thank you again. And thank you for all the homeschool um, families that are out there that are, um, you know, just doing your thing and including me in on your day, day of, of creating and, and art class. And I just really appreciate everybody who's on and listening. And thank you so much. I am so grateful that you have joined us today.